motion. I would like to call to order the February 1st Inland Wetlands and Water Courses Agency meeting for Woodstock, Connecticut at 7.10 p.m. via Zoom uh, platform. Um, I'd like to start out with having a roll call um, of members present. Um, I will begin, Mark Parker, Chairman. Bill Rowinski. Marla Butts, Secretary. <laughs> Sorry, Bill. Okay. It's okay. And Jay Swan, ex officio, sitting in. Present. Okay, very good. And Victor Peabody is absent. Uh, we need to follow up with and see what his status is. Um, uh, Tina, maybe you or, or Jay Swan could try to get in touch with him in the next week or two or before the next meeting and see if he's still planning on being on, on the board or what. So. I have reached out to him on multiple occasions through email, phone call, and Facebook. He's not responding. Hmm. Okay. I'll uh, follow up on that also. We have had this issue with a number of uh, uh, individuals on various uh, boards and commissions. So, and I know Tina because she usually copies me on her communication, but I will follow up also and try to get a, a definitive answer. Okay, thank you. All right. Action on minutes of the previous meeting from January 11th. Um, I will begin. I did a quick read through. And um, on um, members absent, Victory Peabody. So I need to cross off what, the Y. So it was Victor Peabody, not Victory. Um, and on page on the first page, um, under new business, um, item A, first paragraph, second to the last sentence, the project area is roughly 50 by 75. I think it's feet, right, Marla? It should be 50 by 75 feet. That's correct. Okay, so like insert feet uh, there, okay. All right, do any of you have, uh, did you catch anything? I didn't see anything. Um, just the, the motion on the old business of Ronald Petro, the, most in the amendment, they're a little bit uh, awkward, but uh, I don't know if we can do anything about that anyway, so. I think that Marla Butt speaking, I think that that's okay. I think we can keep it the way it is. Yeah, it's mean, clear that he could dredge dredge the pond but not place the pipes or fill any wetlands yes i agree with you i didn't see any other changes needed i didn't see anything else either I move to um, approve the minutes of January 11th, 2021 with the two modifications noted, taking the Y off of Victor Peabody's name and adding the term feet under new business application 0121-01, 50 feet by 75 feet. Second by Motion has been made by Marla Butts, seconded by Bill Rowinski to approve uh, the minutes of last month's meeting with the two corrections. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Thank you, Jay. Uh, I was going to say, that, Jay, because you were uh, in attendance at last month's meeting, uh, you would be able to, I would consider you eligible to vote on on those because you were there for that for that meeting so so thank you um also since, 
since you have a simple majority, I think I may abstain because I, I told Tina earlier, I went through a lot of your documents for tonight's meeting and they were, uh, they're extensive and it would take a long time to try to absorb them. So I think um, I may abstain from most of the votes just to let you know. Okay. Thank you. All right. Next item on our agenda. Under new business, uh, we have application 01-21-07. Stephen C. Kirchy, Kirchy, um Zero, Little Bungie Hill Road. Is there? Is that really zero or should it be? Let's see. Let me look at the application. Uh, should it be? You know, a lot of times, uh, they, when there's no building there, there's no lot, there's no street address assigned until there's a building on it. So there, it could possibly be a zero and not get assigned until you there's know. a building permit issued. Well, I'm, I'm looking at the permit application and there is a, an address, 23 Little Bungie Hill Road. We, we have the map block and lot on here. I think uh, the person that filled out the paperwork just put zero because there is no house number yet. Okay. So it's lot OE73. So why don't we, why don't we put type that, put that in. Okay. So that'll be <clears throat> lot zero or OE. OE73. OE73. <clears throat> okay. Okay. New single family home with well and driveway. Okay, do we have anyone here uh, tonight's uh, meeting to represent this application? If not, Tina, do you have any comments? Um, I don't, Dam Damian Sarantino is the, uh, is representing the property owner on this. Um, I thought he was going to be attending the meeting. Um, I've been out of the office for a couple of weeks. Um, so honestly, I did not review it. Okay. Um, I have not gone out to the uh, site. I am going back to work tomorrow. I was the lucky one to get COVID. Oh. Okay. Yeah. Are you okay now? Tonight. Yeah, I'm okay now. Were you asymptomatic? <laughs> I was sick for about a week. Honestly, oh, I was, okay. Yeah, I'm sorry. I was to, yeah, I'm so, glad you're feeling better. Yeah. Yep, I am. Oh. So I'll be back tomorrow, so I can go out to the site. But based on the review of the application, um, just quickly, I mean, I don't have any comments at this point. Looks to me that it's a wetlands agent approval application, and I think you can process it without our initial. Uh, requirement to approve it. Okay. There's no uh, activities actually in the wetlands. It's all in the upland review area. So you can process this as you feel needed. Okay. Um, and it, I see they have their uh, Northeast District Department of Health approval already. So that's good. Yep. I agree with Mala that uh... They pretty much covered all their bases. Um, I don't see any other issues. All right. I don't think we need a vote on this. Just no, we'll it just... automatically is a wetlands agent approval application. Wetlands agent, you know, right. So let the, uh, the minutes uh, reflect that we recognize this as a wetlands agent uh, approval process. Okay. Tina, if you could, could you send me over that application? Yes. Okay. Under old business, we have application 11-20-36, Town of Woodstock, Peak Brook Road Bridge Replacement. OK. 
Okay. Do we have any extra submittals on uh, this? Mark. You go ahead, Marla. Um, this was accepted back uh, in November. So with the 65 days plus the 90 days that the governor's office gave us in the executive order, we still have plenty of time to process this. I believe last month it was um, waiting for some perhaps revisions to the plans because the DOT came up with some additional information. So I don't think that came in, correct, Tina? You, you probably, if you haven't been in the office, you haven't I seen haven't that. So yeah, I happened I to bump in. Yeah, I happened to bump into John Navarro um, last weekend, I think it was, and, and he mentioned that he didn't have the answer yet, you know, that he didn't have the updates yet. So I think we just need to table this to next meeting. Okay. Okay. Item number, Roman numeral six B, Application 9-20-23, Noreen Stellick, Bragg Mighty Removal in Pond, 294 Route 198. What do I we have need? not heard from her at all. Um, Bruce Woodis had mentioned that she was going to be handling this application, or I, I think both of them actually, he was not going to be, uh, signing in to handle anything on this. She was going to handle it to try to get some direction, but I have not heard back from her. Um, I believe we did send her the agenda and I know she was away for last month. So I don't know how much time we can push it out. So this one would have been uh, accepted on September 14th. <clears throat> um, yeah according to my records. So September, October, November, December, January. So we're, we're close to the end of our timeline on this um, for the 65 days plus the 90 days that the governor gave us. Um, I, I've been thinking about these two applications. I really don't have a problem with her application because her pond is a, a hole in the ground with no water in no water out. The only question was, is where was she going to take the spoils and they shouldn't go in wetlands. I don't have a problem, to be honest with you, granting her a permit to remove accumulated organic material from the pond, providing the spoils are not placed in any wetland and that proper erosion and sediment controls are used during the disposal of those sediments. I do have a problem with the next application though, for the other pond cleaning. Still staying on Irene. What do you guys think? Uh, this is Bill Rowinski, still staying on Irene's. Um, the other thing is if they uh, make sure everything stays on the property and they're not traveling on the road to get to another part of the property, that would be one thing that I would like to see. I think we discussed that before a little bit. Yeah, I, I, I think there was a discussion about the, that she was looking for a place to put it on her own property, the ex, excess materials. The, um, the question was whether she was going to have to drive out into the, into the street to do the disposal, because there's an old wood, according to the map that was supplied with the application, there's an old wood road between her barn and the pond. And if she uses that to gain access and to dispose of it in a non-wetland area, then that would be all right. But, uh, you know, since Tina was gone for a month, we could let it go one more time. Because um, I don't think this one's a problem. And she, she's not going to be doing the dredging now anyways, not right. with the ground frozen. So you could ask her to give us a, an extension of, of um, 30 days, Tina. And yeah, if she I doesn't do give us the extension, then we can, we can decide what we're gonna do after that. Okay.
So for the record, application 09-20-23, uh, where we are asking the applicant uh, to um, apply for an extension uh, so that we can put this on the plate for next month. To grant us to an grant, extension. Grant us an she has to grant it to us. She has to grant us an extension. Right? Yeah. Okay. All right, great. Would we also be, uh, Bill Rowinski, would you also be requesting the location of where she's putting the spoils and how she's going to get there? We had talked, that was one of the reasons why we were holding off because that was what we had asked for a couple of months ago. Yeah. So if you could transmit that to her, Tina, also uh -huh. that we need, we'd like that information. Yep. Yeah, and if you could just let her know that if she can do that, keep it on her own property and not go out on the road, then that would set her up for a favorable, a favorable vote when we bring it up next month. <laughs> okay. okay. Um, William Stellick, application 09-20-24, 1030. Route 198, Phragmite removal in pond. And as Marla alluded to earlier, this pond is located within a water course. So there are slightly different issues with, with, this, with this, uh, this application. So we don't have any uh, additional information or plans on how that could be accomplished, both in uh, retaining the where the water, how the water is retained, and how to manage the water during that process, and where to put the spoils, and et cetera. And this application, I note, was not asked for as a farm pond. A use permitted as of right, so it's going through the permitting process. And did this come in at the same time as um, Noreen Stellix? Because are we are we at yep. the end of our yeah? So do we also we need to ask for an extension? Ask request an extension. Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, application 01-21-01, Lawrence Aqu Aqu Aquarulo, uh, 32 Lakeview Drive, Shoreline Cleanup. Uh, I so. recall correctly, this is mostly an after the fact permit yep. where most of the work had already been done. That is correct. So at this juncture, I didn't see a real problem with that work. And he really needs to do it while the lake is down. So if it waits much longer, it's gonna start rebounding if it hasn't already begun rebounding. No, while well, the gate is still open and the lake is still down. Okay. So is he waiting? I don't have on? any problem. No, that we just accepted it last month, so we can approve it this month. Yeah. Okay. So let's let's give him the go ahead so that uh, he can get to it while the lake is still down. Uh, I'm open for I'll make a motion. A mo go ahead. I'll move. <laughs> Bill, why don't you do it this time? <laughs> <laughs> I did the last one. <laughs> I only have one question about that. Do we know what kind of plastic matting was put down, whether it's a sheet or woven or um, anything like that? Do you have any that information? 
No, I don't. <clears throat> and I don't have any information on it. So typically, if you're going to put a, a mat, a, a fabric down, it's going to be a, a geotextile for separation. So usually that's um, has some may have some perviousness to it. It's usually like a, a um, like a, a a plastic webbing. It's not a, a, a it's not a, a, a solid sheet usually if it's a, a separation geotextile. And that's what I would assume that they're using. I wouldn't think that they're using a, 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 a black plastic, although you can, we could approve it on the condition that it be a woven geotextile um, um, soil separation fabric. Well, what was the purpose of it? Was it just simply to separate the substrates or was it to also prevent prevent rooted uh, uh, aquatic vegetation from coming back up through? I, I think in a, a situation like this, it's to stop if you walk on it, you don't wanna push the sand and have the muck or uh, materials from below to come up through the sand. Right. You want them to stay separated. The, no matter what you do, vegetation is gonna try to grow through it. Even if it was a, uh, a single plastic sheet. What the homeowner did was remove the leaves and debris from that area and then is attempted to put in basically a sand swim area. But your application says coarse sand uh, to hold down lake matte fabric. What does yes. that mean in your application? Yeah. I didn't put it in the application. Did you see that? No, Greg I have Favreau. not seen that. It'd be Greg Favreau from the lake. And uh, I never saw that application. Uh, I know that uh, that the work had been, had begun and then they asked him to cease and desist till he got a wetlands permit. Yeah, there wasn't much left to do except put some stone down near the runoff? Yes, yes. Yeah, so if he's oh, already laid down the uh, right. geotextile, it makes no sense trying to dig it up and see what it is. I would just let it. Uh, sunset, sunset, sunset landscaping did the work. But I would like to see perhaps some documentation of what actually was put down. That would be my only uh, request. Well, an option then is is to approve the application on the condition that no further work uh, be granted until such time as the geotextile that was used uh, be identified and supplied to the wetlands office. Okay. So I, I would move to Approve application 012101, Lawrence Aquarolo, 32 Lakeview Drive Shoreline Cleanup uh, with the uh, distinction that no further work be done until we get documentation of what geotextile fabric was used. Um, and I guess that's it for now. I second that motion. So would we call this a conditional approval? Yes. So 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 Bill Ruinski has made the motion, seconded by Marla Betts, but of a conditional approval of, of application uh, 01-21-01, uh, uh, which upon you know receiving information and documentation of the type of uh, material uh, laid down uh, under the, under the sand. That, yeah, that no further work happened until we get that documentation. Correct. Okay. Any further 
questions, discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Hi. Thank you very much. Okay. Okay. Now we have application 01-21-02. Maria Bushi, Laurel Hill Drive, map 27272, lot 34, block B35, construction of new home, septic well and driveway. <clears throat> Uh, good evening, Paul Twilliger from PC Survey Associates, representing the Bushies. Um, la last week, oh, I'm sorry, last month, um, Ms. Uh, Ms. Butts had requested a, an alternative to what we had planned. Uh, she had marked up a drawing and sent it over to us. Uh, we reviewed the drawing and rather than go through a whole detailed um, redesign of the site, we addressed the immediate concerns that um, came up with, with her proposal. Um, it was reviewed by the site engineer, Norm Tebow from Killingly Engineering Associates. And we've submitted uh, to the commission a, um, uh, his letter of, letter of his findings. Um, basically I, that design, whereas it would move the house further from the wetlands, it, it would pose more of a, a danger to the safety of people driving in and out of the lot due to the short length of the driveway, there wouldn't be room for a turnaround. So they in essence have to back out into the road. It also brings, um, brings the driveway closer to um, uh, the embankment and it would make the sight line coming out of the driveway uh, more limited than where we have proposed the driveway now. Um, so that was a couple of reasons we had discounted that type of alternative in the beginning. Um, I might want to note that this plan that you have before you actually is our second alternative. The original alternative was to um, have the house to the rear of the property uh, and there was previously a plan approved by at least the health department. I'm not sure if it came before the wetlands commission or not at this point, um, but there was a previous plan approved showing a house to the rear portion of the lot with the septic system in the front, which brought it further off of the wetland area. But between the time that plan was done and the time that my clients purchased the property, the lot next door was developed and they put their well in a place that made that impossible to do. So that kind of left us where we are today, trying to fit in what, what it is that they're looking, looking to, to build the house that, you know, it's, that suits their needs. Um, and again, to reiterate where we are at, we're looking, we'd end up having to fill about 1500 square feet of the wetland area um, to accommodate the the driveway for that for the proposed house. This is Bill Rowinski. I'm looking at the, the rear, and you have a 50 foot minimum between uh, mark mark between the house and the, the septic system. Correct. That, yeah. that, that's statutory, or yes, that that's the health code. If, if you have um, a septic system that's located, the leaching area that's located uphill or up gradient from a foundation drain, you have to have 50 feet separating distance. Okay. So I have one question um, still. I understand uh, Killingly Engineering's Norm Tybo's um, response. Um, I'm not sure that I understand about the retaining wall being more extensive because there is a retaining wall there already. But I, I'm not a traffic expert. It's a private road. It's the owner of the private road. I believe it's the Lake Association that has the decision to make on that. But 
I do have a question and a concern about the fact that there's filling of wetlands on property that's not owned by your client, but is outside of the property lines uh, and in the, um, the roadway of Laurel Hill Drive, which is where the proposed cross culvert is for the driveway. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, does your client have permission um, from the owner of Laurel Hill Drive to perform this work? Um, I had posed that question to my client and she had gotten into contact with the Lake Association, but I don't know, she never got back to me with what the answer was. They do have a right of way over that road. Um, if they need access to that road, I would think that they would have to be able to do what they need to do to get that access. If that means well, filling wetlands. Um, a well, right of way is a right right to cross. It doesn't necessarily mean it's to cross it at whatever is convenient for them. And the fact that they're filling wetlands in that right of way, um, we don't have their, their deed stating what that right of way is, nor do we have anything from the owner of Laurel Hill Drive to state that they are on board with this work occurring on their property, which is actually filling wetlands on their property. Right. Um, so I, I don't think we should take an action on this application, but give the applicant a chance to provide information regarding uh, what permissions they have received from the owner of Laurel Hill Drive um, to fill wetlands on their property. If not that, then at least provide the language for the right of way to show that they have the rights to do this on Correct. somebody else's property. This is Greg Favreau from the Lake Bungie Task Force. I'm, I'm the new acting uh, building chair. Uh, I spoke with Mrs. Bushy on multiple occasions. She is very upset about this and she's blaming the lake on the wetlands area. And granted the drainage off of Oak Drive definitely uh, has an impact on that wetlands, but I don't know how much besides that, how how much other groundwater is in that area. They've done extensive tree work on that property. They took in, they took chips and filled in the wetlands with the chips so they could drive their skid steer on it. Uh, I did send Tina some pictures of what the current drainage looks like during a rain event. And there is no way she's requesting that I put in some type of drainage to divert the water from the back of the lot and to dry up the wetlands. There is no way I can access that without going through the middle of the wetlands. I don't know, I don't even know how I would get equipment in there to do the work. If they were to- well, build, Let me ask they, you, are, are you authorized um, is it the Lake Association that owns the, the road? Yes, the tax district does. Okay, it's actually, the taxing actually, district. Has the taxing district given you the authority to sign off on things like this, to do yes. work on the tax yes. association's property? Yes. Okay. So have you given any approval at this point in time for them to. No, I was, I've been waiting to find out if this filling of the wetlands would be approved by the town. There's no silt fence up in place. You don't, there's no even delineations now left of where the silt fence should have been erected. So there's no clear definitions of the wetlands. Well, I'm kind of in a sundry that, you know, and I don't know what they can do to clean up what they did into the wetlands. When I spoke with Mrs. Bushy about it, she informed me that the tree company that did the removal told that told her that they uh, wetlands did not apply to them. Okay. But I what I hear Marla asking Bill. is there's a there's a portion of the wetlands yeah. that are not on the Bushies property, but on the, the Laurel Hill Drive slash tax dis district section. 
And it's that particular area of the wetland that the, the tax district, the Lake Association needs to approve. I mean, if they don't want to fill in their portion of the wetland on the road portion, then, you know, we're, we're not going to, I can't see me as, a, as a, a, an admission, an agency agent giving approval if, if the, you know, the tax district doesn't want to fill in that portion of the wetland that's on their property. Uh, I'm not opposed to it as long as they put in some type of drainage to drain that water away. My concerns is that the path that the water currently makes goes right through the middle of that wetlands. And if, if they're going to fill that in, you know, I want some type of guarantee that, you know, they'll be able to either put a curtain drain up or some to divert the water. Other than that, I, I Paul Twilliger, PC Survey Associates, um, like to address a couple of the issues. Um, the we we will be with us filling the wetland. We're filling about two and a half to three feet at the the highest point. Um, that's going to create, in essence, a wall for the water to be following the toe of slope. So that will divert the water in the direction of that catch basin in the area where we're filling. Okay. So that in itself will, should alleviate some of the uncontrollable flow that I haven't, I haven't firsthand seen, but I've seen pictures of that um, Mr. Favreau is referring to. Um, as far as, um, I think he had mentioned that Mrs. Bushy had said that she wanted the Lake Association to build a, a, a trench or something in there. I'm not aware of that. That's not that's not my version of the conversation with her. Um, she was willing to do what needed to be done, you know, to alleviate the problem within limits without, you know, spending a fortune to fix what is ultimately the responsibility of the person draining onto her property. Um, we'd like to work together, you know, with the Lake Association on this. Um, we're not looking to come in and cause problems by any means. Um, now the cross ash sections that you're talking about filling in, that goes almost right up to the drainage easement. It is, well, you say drainage easement. The, the drainage easement, you have a drainage easement that's five feet wide along yep. the, um, the south boundary of the property. Yes, yes. Um, and I'm looking at the hashtag. The hill is probably 20, 20 feet away from that. But and the drainage easement doesn't follow the water course. Neighboring property also to work with. I have a question for Bill. Bill, in our packet was a site visit report from you. Yeah. Um, that you had gone and seen the site on the 16th and you provided yeah. some photographs. Um, and I don't think um, that Mr. Favreau has seen those photographs, but uh, where the wood chips were placed. Um, and I can still see a couple of flags in the photographs. Did you see any wetlands flags when you were out there? I saw flags. Bill, I didn't, do you recall didn't, seeing anything that's... I saw flags. It didn't look like they were flagging wetlands, though. They looked like they might have been more uh, property corners, property boundaries. Yes, that's what's there now is property borders, boundaries. Yeah, the... I, yeah, the wetland flags. I the last my last site visit, I didn't see any wetland flags left after the tree harvest. Um, we will be as so part they of our, cleared beyond. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Um, Go ahead. Uh, as 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 part of um, our activity out there, the first thing we would do would be to stake the location of that silt fence which is 
you know, the barrier between the activity and the area that's to be undis undisturbed, in quotes. Um, at, at that point, when that's marked, the silt fence is, is put up. Anything on the protected side of the silt fence that has been disturbed would obviously be rectified to its previous condition. Would any wood chips that have been in there would be removed. Um, we re regrade out the, any ruts that were left by the skitters, um, and um, you know, seed it as necessary. Do you know when the uh, the That's trees were cut? Saying. Excuse me. Do you know when the trees were cut? I believe it's been over the period of time. Since starting back in December. Um, they were out there finishing up last, was it a week ago, Friday? So from the pictures that Bill took, it appears that they already cleared the wetlands that are part of the application. So they were already doing work in wetlands um, they, it before they got like any they, approvals. They cleared trees in the wetlands, yes. Um, have you spoken to your client about why they went ahead and did that before they got their approvals? Uh, yes, I did. She had said that at the beginning of this process, she had called the town and spoke to three different people on three different occasions and told them she wanted to clear the lot and cut the trees off the lot and was told that it was okay to cut trees on the lot. You didn't need any permits to do that. Did, did she give you any names? No, she didn't. Of the people that she spoke to at town hall? No, she didn't. Well, without being able to verify that she spoke to particular individuals, it's kind of hard to know. And the fact that on your site plan, you show wetlands delineated. They um, she should have not gone in the wetlands until after she got an approval in any case. Um, Right, and I what think from what she was saying, she was told that you can cut trees in the wetlands because it's an agricultural, it's considered an agricultural use. No. Uh, not really. She has no agricultural activity there. No. I know. Unless she's it's harvesting timber, that's different. And there's a form for that for getting permission to harvest timber on your property. I, and you'll I, find that on the she, website. She was going by, you know, what she was told by the town and what she was told by her forester or whoever it was that she had taken the trees out. So that kind of leads us to where we are now and we're trying to get out of this mess. Yeah, it is a mess. So I guess what we're looking for is some guidance as to what it is we, you want from us now at this point how to move forward. I think your applicant needs to work out with the Lake Association or the taxing district exactly what they find acceptable for work on their property because I don't see the Wetlands Commission granting a permit to do work on somebody else's property without the permission of that property owner. Uh, there's no permission from the taxing district that says that this work is okay in their book. And until that occurs, I don't think the commission could grant an approval for doing that work on that other property. You're, you're Even talking if she about owns the driveway. A right of way. Mm -hmm. Well, the driveway permit uh, should be posting a bond. I have no issues with the driveway whatsoever. Uh, I did talk to him about the uh, drainage pipe underneath the driveway and I really have a preference of not putting a drainage pipe underneath the driveway. Uh, it just creates another issue of creating a drainage swale, going in, maintaining it. There's enough pitch and grade from the property to the road that I feel there's no need to put a pipe underneath the driveway. Uh, the water should be able to flow by fine. And we can look, we can have our engineer look at an alternative. Um, that just seemed a way to actually guide the water into the drainage system a little easier. But. Mark, I move we table this application to give the applicant a chance to uh, 
get the permission of the taxing district to do whatever the work is they figure out that they're going to do on that portion at least. Um, I, I, I'm not, a, I'm not a, a, a traffic person, so I really don't know whether or not placing the driveway you know, further to the north really creates much of a problem. I don't know what the speed limits are on those roadways. Um, if they're 35 miles an hour, 25 miles an hour, locating it at a different location may be irrelevant, but that's not my call. Um, I do think that this is a very tiny lot and it doesn't have a lot of ability. Um, and I think they're maximizing the footprint of the house to have a three bedroom house. I understand why they want a three bedroom house, but maybe they should have, should have bought a bigger property. But needless to say, the issues with the ownership of the work that is occurring on the taxing district property has to be resolved before we can grant a permission. I, that's my opinion. So I, I would uh, request that we table this application to next meeting to provide the applicants representatives to come up with some kind of solution regarding the work that's on the taxing district's property. Can we, before the next meeting, can we come out and delineate the driveway? So at least then we can get a, a good rough idea where the driveway is gonna be. Oh yeah, that can that can be done. Um, weather and ground conditions permitting. Yeah. Just let me know when that's that's occurred, and mm -hmm. then I can, you know, then go out and make a judgment. As far as filling in the wetlands on the edge of the the Lake District's property, I have no problem with that. Uh, my only issue, like I said, is you know, is I don't want to end up having the homeowner, once this is all completed, come back against the taster and say, you know, you need to put in all this drainage work. Yeah, I mean, that and sounds I like think more of an issue between need... the Lake District yeah. and the, uh, yeah. the homeowner. Because I don't, I don't know, if, I don't know if even the inland wetlands would permit me to put in drainage through that wetlands. You're not the one asking for the permission. It is no. the the prospective homeowner. Yes. But correct. they have to get permission from the property owner. Okay. My advice would be is find the plan that you think is acceptable and then put in writing that that plan is acceptable. They can submit a revised drawing showing whatever that is, whatever it is, and that you cite that plan and whatever revision date is in your approval for the work to occur on the taxing district property. Okay. Have that as part of the record for the application, and then we could move forward with how we're going to handle this. Okay, great. Not a problem. Bill, do you have a second on that table? Bill Verwitsky seconding Marla's motion to table this application. 012102 Maria Bushy, Laura Hill Drive. Yep. Okay, and and uh, Greg and Mr. Terwilliger, you both have enough information now that you know what you need to do. Yes. Yeah, I believe so. Okay. Um, good. My only my only question was about the um, activity with the tree harvest. If there's anything that needs to be done between now and the next meeting. I mean, I don't I know what we it. could do. It is what it is at this point. Um, I wouldn't touch it. No. Don't touch it because. Clear cut, clear cutting, complete clear cutting of a wetland is not necessarily a, a use as of right. <laughs> yeah, you, you need permits for that. Yep. So they, they need to stop until this is approved. Correct. Yeah, and it's that work is done. It's yeah. it is finished. I know Mr. Favreau was um, requesting a silt fence be put up. Um, at this point, I don't think that would do anything that's normally done after you cut the clear the lot and before you right. start the ground activity. So I think it, to wait until after our application is through the commission would be best as far as putting any silt fence up. All right, I'm comfortable with that. We're not proposing activity on the site at this point until we get approval to do so. I'm comfortable with that. Okay. All those in favor of the table signify by saying aye. 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 Thank you. Opposed? 
Abstained? So moved. Thank we'll you. talk about this next month. Very good. Okay. Moving on to item no Roman numeral seven, review of bylaws. Um, I have a recommendation. There were two things that we need to um, update in our bylaws. One is, according to my notes from last month's meeting, we need to give the wetlands agent authority to pay any bills, expenditures, or whatever, up to $100. So I'm thinking that that should go in um, is it number six? Yeah. Six, six A, six. number five. A new five. Authorized expenditure uh, of up to $100 without prior approval of the agency. Five well, is up we, on the we, next we, page. We'd, we'd, make it, we'd make it six. Page two. Yeah, but on page three, is, is, is Roman numeral five. So this would be adding a Roman numeral six. Oh, oh excuse would, me. You're... Yeah, it would be six. No, 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 no. Six what, a... Wait a minute, wait six. a minute. I'm looking at the wrong copy, hold on. Hold on. Gotcha. Staff and their okay. duties, number six. A, the yep. agency may appoint yep. Roman numeral six um i would suggest the following language and then you guys can wordsmith it the duly authorized agent shall be given authority to approve payment of iwwa expenses or expend ex expenditures of up to 100 dollars does that make sense? Does that flow well? What do you, what do you, do you want to wordsmith it a little? Yeah, are you putting this in 6A? 6A, Roman numeral six. Okay, then no, that doesn't make sense because if you read 6A, it starts with these duties shall include, oh, oh okay. colon, and then six would just be um, authorized, Authorizing, you want to keep the same verbiage. You're doing a lot of ings, making, issuing, making, investigating. You should be keeping <laughs> okay. contemporaneous notes. You. So then, um, so we should change five to say keeping con contemporaneous notes. And there should be a six that says authorizing the expenditure of up to $100 without prior approval of the agency. Good, thank you. I like that. Bill, what do you think? <laughs> <laughs> All right, good. If you're going to if you're going to do that, then I also would like to change item B, the next paragraph below, to where it says such report shall include a list and description of all determinations, approvals, put a comma in and add expenditures and activities performed. So we should know what she's been paying. Such report shall consist Such of a, report shall cons list of a, of a list description of all determinations. A list and de description, yep. Slash approvals, comma. Comma. Expenditures, expenditures. Comma, yep. Expenditures. And then just finished com, with yeah, yeah. And, activities. and activities performed. Right. So we'll need to present these changes in writing at next month's um, meeting for approval. That's how. Um, I have a question. Go ahead. I have a question, Mark. Yep. All right, page one. Number four, membership, item E. 
No regular member or alternate member of the agency shall sit as a member or alternate of the Planning and Zoning Commission. Why is that? Why is that in the bylaws? I don't know. I think it should be removed. Because you may, at some point, you might have someone on the Planning and Zoning Commission who's willing to be on the Inland Wetlands Commission also. It would allow for some con communication between the two agencies beyond just Tina. We can ask our thought. attorney. I just didn't see why it had. There must be a reason that it's that way. We should ask our attorney. It has to be a reason. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I, I haven't memorized the state statutes for, you know, composition of, of, you know, municipal agencies. So I don't know if there's anything in the statutes about, you know, serving on more than one, you know, agency in your town. Um, it's yeah, it's not in the, in the Wetlands Act, but it could be in the authorizing ordinance. Exactly. Uh, the authorizing ordinance is really the area where you set how your commission members or your agency members are appointed. And um, um, so maybe we ought to, ought to look at the authorizing ordinance and see if there's something in there that prohibits it. I can do that before next meeting. Yeah, do that. But Tina, if you could ask the attorney, that would be helpful mm -hmm. too. Okay. Um, I'm going to make another suggestion. We've been having a real problem of getting commission members. And we had the same problem in Thompson, where they didn't have any alternates. They, all they had was seven members, and they couldn't get seven members. They could get four. So what they did is they ended up changing their seven members to five members and two alternates. And so then a quorum would be three if all you could get was three. Um, but they could have up to five. And typically there are people who are willing to be an alternate but don't wanna be actual members. And those per people like Stuart actually got put in repeatedly. Um, but that's a thought, but that means you have to change the authorizing ordinance. But is that something that you would want to consider, considering we haven't been able to get seven people, much less an alternate? Yeah. <laughs> Hi, it's Jay. If I could offer. You're breaking up, Jay, but go ahead. Okay. Um, I, I agree with all of you. Uh, I think Tina checking it out with Rich Roberts, her attorney is very important to find out if there is a reason and that's specific to planning and zoning being part of inland wetlands. But Marla's point is very, very uh, well taken because in, in the last year we have had major problems getting alternates and members and to, to serve on these boards and commissions. Um, I was asked today to provide a list of what uh, vacancies we have. And we had such a flurry of, of resignations in November and December and early January, um, they were out of date almost immediately. So I think what Marla's proposing, proposing and what uh, Tina's proposing to check with the attorney, um, I, I think that would be a good move, especially what I, I think Thompson perhaps had to do this out of reality. And this is the problem that we face many times with a lot of these boards and commissions. Yep. So how does that, Bill, how do you feel about reducing the commission down, the agency down to five versus with two alternates? Well, it wouldn't be my first choice, but uh, given that we don't have, you know, we don't have enough people available um, just to be able to conduct business, I think we might need to do something, but the numbers are getting small enough that it, we might start running into problems as uh, things being, you know, people are accusing undue influence of 
one way or another, just because there's not enough people. Um, the only other suggestion that I that I was thinking of, and this would be a kind of a desperation, is that since uh, the first selectman is a ex officio member of all the boards and commissions, could there be a way that he would we could appoint him as an alternate um, through some of our bylaws to allow him to be an alternate, thereby being a, a voting member or being able to be seated as a, as a voting member? You know, I, I think that's a good point because I think ex officio is means just by virtue of your uh, office and doesn't necessarily mean you're voting. So if we were going to change the authorizing ordinance to drop it down, you could also ch make that change at the same time is to add the, you know, ex officio shall mean, shall include ex officio members shall be voting members. I mean, I, I don't, I, I think you'd have to breeze it by the town attorney though. Or it could be a different Marla, uh, member of the board of selectmen. Marla, my only concern with that is many times as I've expressed to this group, I am not on top of the information, you know, like many of the documents that have come in and I told Tina this afternoon, I'd be attending tonight, but with the, um, a number of documents related to, for instance, this home that was being proposed uh, out in, in um, uh, Bungie, I, to absorb all that information was, was almost impossible for me this afternoon. So I, I think, yes, I think by virtue of the, the Office of First Selectmen, they automatically serve as, but I would be concerned about making them, whomever it is, making them a voting member because then they're going to feel obligated to, you know, be uh, aware of all the implications because they may or may not have to vote. I just think that's tough to put that a tough position to put them in. Well, that's why I, this is Bill Rowinski again. That's why I'm suggesting it as number one, being an alternate and the alternate would have to be seated. And even as a, as a regular member, if you're not up on the information, then you uh, need to abstain from voting. And that's always going to be an option if you don't feel you're up to, or whoever it might be feels up to uh, uh, having enough information to make a decision to vote. But being, an alternate, an, abstention. being an alternate, it gives the potential to be seated as a voting member. Which means then you have okay, a quorum. Sure. Potential. No, I agree, Bill, with potential is good, but to actually vote uh, puts them in a, in a precarious position. Yeah, but I, I understand. I understand what you're saying. Yeah. I'm not saying it's, a, it's the best, best uh, option, but it, it does give us another option to get a, a, a potential voting member. And again, the other consideration is apparently what they've done in Thompson with the five members and the two alternates. I mean, again, that's some consideration, but that's something that Tina would have to check out with our town attorney. Yeah, that can only be done through the authorizing ordinance, which would take a public hearing to change the ordinance. Yeah, tell well, the issue with the public hearings, we can. Yeah, the, those issues here, um, and again, with the COVID situation, executive orders, some things we were able to deal with, other things I, I uh, preferred to pass on and have them go to the future because I thought it was more important that the public have input. So again, that's something that, you know, again, the executive orders versus town meetings and referendums, uh, that's something that will have to be weighed uh, in the future. Okay. So it's something that we'll just have to keep on the burner, so to speak, on the back burner, thinking about it. Until we all get vaccinated or get infected like Tina. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Don't blame me. Tina? <laughs> 
where the, the infection was going to be, and she's done it very well. So, uh, thank you. We lost you. <clears throat> okay. Um, I. Um, oh, oh, Mark. Mark, Go ahead. Mark, Go ahead. Mark, one more thing. Got it. Page seven, item 17, amendments. These bylaws may be amended by a two thirds vote of the agency's entire voting membership. <laughs> so what does that mean? Do we need to look at changing that to, for the bylaws just to make it a simple majority of a quorum? Because right now, the membership is supposed to be seven. Two thirds of seven would be at least three. Yes, or four, four. Correct, four. So I think we should change item 17 amendments. Remember these are bylaws. They're not our regulations. It's a little different. Right, right. I think we could do that change that to um, maybe amended by a majority vote of a quorum attending. Right. Um, majority vote of a of a quorum of attending. Yeah. Majority vote. Of, you have to have a quorum in order to take a vote anyways, right. but. So let's get in writing. These bylaws may be amended by a majority vote of the agency's quorum members. Of the of the quorum, yeah, the agency's quorum, yeah. Of an attending quorum. Of an because well, you have to have a quorum to do a vote, vote anyways. But of the agency's attending quorum. Okay, and then the rest of that can remain the same. Yeah. Only yeah. after the proposed change has been read and discussed at a previous regular meeting. So what I was hoping to do was if we could get in writing at this meeting and you know talk about it and then next month present it again and, and vote, vote on the changes. Otherwise, we, we present it at next month's meeting and then we've got to wait another month <laughs> because we can only vote on it if it's been you know presented in writing and discussed at the previous meeting so maybe we should just do it that well, way then anyway. that means let's let's then, then that means that well if i'm we're, tina's got to go check on on the membership of the planning and right. zoning commission yep so, so um, yeah we'll, if, we'll, if that's going to be removed I mean, I have no problem if it gets removed for the next meeting. If she says it's okay, if she says it's not okay, or she doesn't got an answer, then we'll just leave it alone, we'll leave it in. Yeah, okay. So yeah, so we'll, we'll get all these changes or unchanges <laughs> presented at the March meeting. And then we'll, we'll, it'll, we'll, we'll all discuss it, you know, whatever. And then at the April meeting, we'll be able to vote on it and make, the, make it official. Just one more thing. This is Go ahead. Um, I was reading a resource on Robert's rules and it talks about making a provision in the bylaws to meet by video conferencing to allow that to be one of your mechanisms. Now uh, we're, we're doing this now by executive order of the governor, but we wouldn't typically probably be able to do that legally if we weren't under that executive order, do we want to think or discuss about making a provision for uh, doing some sort of a video conferencing meeting uh, if it, the situation should arise that we need it? Yeah, I was going to propose that under section eight meetings that we create um, a new letter. I think it would be I. 
So 8i would read something like this. In the event of inclement weather or other emergency conditions, such as statewide executive orders, <laughs> um, meetings may be held via video conferencing, internet platforms, something, something like that. Could we put it in there? Would that, would that make sense to put it in that section? Uh, yes. The only thing we'd still probably uh, might be subject to having uh, a two week notice or some sort of previous notice that the meeting will be held that way. Right. Well, it's that's that that the location of the of the meeting is actually placed in the agenda. It's required under FOIA. So on item C, notice of the meeting. Uh, well, let me know, other than a regular meeting, shall specify the purpose of such meeting and no other business. Shall, oh no, that's not it. Um, Maybe you could put that in under A, regular meetings shall be held on the first Monday of each month at 7 p.m. In the town, the town hall. hall or unless otherwise scheduled, you know, whatever, you know, or via video conferencing, something like that. Yeah, that would be the place where you'd put it. Yeah. What do you think of that, Bill? We put it in there. That works for me. Okay, so. So we, maybe you can wordsmith it, Marla, to make it fit in well, there. Well, just what you said. In, it was, you said in town hall or in event of emergency. What was the language you had? Event of um, and emergency. In, in events of emergency conditions, such as conditions. statewide executive orders, <laughs> such, as. such as statewide executive orders. But then you're making it dependent on emergency conditions. Um, you know that everybody's going to be out of town, but everybody's capable of video conferencing. You could still potentially have your meeting. Okay. So. So leave it open then. Uh, that Just it's, leave it open. Uh, at town hall or by, or by, or by. Uh, video conference. What do we call this? Virtual meeting. Is it, it's conference. not really. A... Or virtually, yeah. Um. And shall be noticed. Uh, one month in advance or something like that. You know, it'll, it'll be noticed. How about that? Via the town website where and how it's going to be uh, open to the public. The notice is required by FOIA. So location is always required there too. I suppose we could take a look at the executive order language to see what it says, but um, I think what you want to say in that second line about uh, in, in town hall or by online um, online communication oh. via the internet. Yeah. Your agenda has to be posted 24 hours before your meeting. On your agenda, it gives a location of where the meeting is going to be. So I would be concerned about posting it a month ahead of time if you were going to go virtual. So give yourself some leeway because again, something may come up at the last minute. So I think, and again, this may be something that uh, Tina can check out with our town attorney. I think whether or not it's going to be virtual or not could be part of your agenda. And I believe that's only posted uh, 24 hours prior to your meeting. That's correct. 
but right. the only thing is 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 the the notice the only legal notice that is required to be posted agenda notice is a special meeting that's mandated that it has to be placed on the web other notices are not required to be placed on the web regular meetings are not required to be posted on the web under FOIA not yet at least so um Marlon, that's true pretty sure that we post all meetings as a matter of convenience, if you will, to citizens 24 hours before. Mm -hmm. And it may mm -hmm. not be required, but I think it's been done, uh, you know, in years past. Yeah, but you don't get caught in a FOIA pr a problem if uh, it's a regular meeting and you only posted it with the town clerk and it didn't get posted on the website. So if we put it in the reg, if we put it in the bylaws saying it will be posted and we make that error, then it could come back and bite us. So I think all we should just say here is just that, say that it's that's at the town hall or by or online by uh, internet communication and leave the notice silent and let that fall out as how it would normally. Okay, that's fine. But you know, Mark said Mark said perhaps uh, notice it previous month and I think you you as a group have to leave yourself some leeway in case a quote unquote emergency comes up so I wouldn't do it a month ahead of time because it, you know you you all can decide what's you know an appropriate period of time yep yeah drop the drop the reference to the month yeah How about if we change the words, the wording to be uh, remote conferencing or something to that effect? Because that doesn't tie us to any particular technology. It doesn't have to be online. It could be by telephone. Um, it doesn't have to be video. Um, the only reason why I wouldn't do it by telephone is because you can't have it recorded. You, you have to have recordings of these. And so yeah. when it's on Zoom, when it's by the internet, it's actually, there's a recording that's maintained and, and kept up in the cloud somewhere. Yeah. So we couldn't really just do it by telephone. We have to use some kind of platform that uses the internet that would allow us to have it recorded in some fashion. Okay, that's what it is, that's what it is. Yeah. Mm. Okay. Any other sections of the, the bylaws that we need to address? Okay. Take a look at item B, meetings. A simple majority of the full voting membership of the agency shall constitute a quorum and the number of votes necessary to transact business shall be four seated members. Okay, never. that's all right, that's fine, never mind. I'm looking for anything that requires a two thirds vote. On uh, item D on page four, all agency meetings shall be open to the public unless closed by two thirds vote of an agency quorum present for an executive session. Well, that's, I suppose is okay. In accordance with the Freedom Information Act. Well, I guess that's Freedom Information Act sets the standards for what you can do when you go into executive session but it doesn't tell you you have to do the two thirds vote. I don't think. Well, like we can leave, I think we should just leave that that way anyways then. Isn't that enough for now? Yeah, I think so. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, so we'll bring these forward to next month's meeting and uh, vote on it in April. Okay. Oh, election of officers. Oh my goodness. 
<laughs> I have to laugh. Well, here we are. Because we vote ourselves into the same office. <laughs> I don't have a problem being secretary again. <laughs> I guess I'll be vice chairman as long as Mark's chairman. Yep, I'm willing to go do it again. Sure. I move that the existing legislative officers be uh, elected for another term, another yearly term. Second. By Bill Rowinski. Motion has been made by Myla Butts, seconded by Bill Rowinski to approve the existing slate of officers for the for another year <laughs> for another year for 2021 and 22 so into 22 um all those in favor signify by saying aye 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 opposed aye abstained so moved okay and jay tell the selectmen we need some more members <laughs> we need to find somebody. Okay. Wetlands agent. If, I, I wonder if, I, I, just a quick question. I wonder if there okay. might be a, okay. a, a I'm, high I'm school guilty. student that that or college student that would be interested. <laughs> a college student? Hey, yeah. I was in college once. Um, I'm in favor, by the way. I'm sorry. I'm guilty. I walked out of the room. If you all want to write it down, the time and the day, I walked out of the room. You may all sue me. Class action sue. Jeez. Okay. I was just, I don't know if you heard me comment, Jay. I said, we need more members. Selectmen, please find somebody. So Marla suggests maybe there's, maybe there's an environmental or, you know, a biology college student that might be interested in, you know, uh, that the selectmen could find, you know, and, and I, actually we did have a, a member a few years ago, he was fresh out of college and uh, he served on our, our wetlands commission, but only for like a year or two. Um, but still that even, do, you know, that much, it would be a help. So I'm sure there's probably some kids that are going to Yukon and they're doing remote. They're really good on electronics and stuff. That would find it like in the the conservation uh, at the school of agriculture. They might right. have somebody there. Yeah. So yeah, if you know I, anybody, I, go ahead, Jay. I, no, I agree with all of you, and I'm a big proponent of getting high school and college students involved in town government, volunteering, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But it just, um, again, it, it's something that we, the Board of Selectmen, deal with all the time. And I, as first selectman, deal with daily in trying to get appropriate warm bodies to step yeah. up and volunteer to serve on various you know, boards and commissions. Um, and it, I understand your, uh, I share your pain. How's that? <laughs> yeah. So yeah. I understand and agree. Yeah, it's a tough one because it's such a specialized commission, you know, agency, very specialized. So it's hard to find the right people. Does Joe Palulik still live in town? Yes. He lives right why next. Why don't we see if he's in, why don't we see if he's interested? Or how about, um, uh, another tree farmer uh, used to work at DEP. Um, oh God, what's his name? John Simakowski. <laughs> yeah, John. John actually did the the. He worked for um, the Regional Council of Governments to do the ten significant wetlands report in Thompson back in the nineteen eighties. Maybe he would be willing. Yeah, he's retired now. You know, Marla, I resent and think that it's very unfair to pick on retired people. I know <laughs> wonderful retired people that got sucked in. I mean, I'm sorry, got volunteered to do various <laughs> jobs for the community. And I resent your yeah. attitude. Tell me all about it. Tell me all about it. <laughs> so John Simic 
Kowski is on WPCA apparently. He just he was just appointed for WPCA, but I can check with uh, Joe Polulik. I still have his contact information. I'll reach out to him. Well, he's a he's a civil engineer, so it's a skill yeah. set that would be of value. Yeah, that would be great if he still lives in Woodstock. <laughs> yeah. I asked Charlie Katie to uh, join, but he was more into the economic development. He really, although he would be great on this uh, agency, he, he declined. He wants to do the economic development route. So I'm trying. All right. Well, wetlands agent activity report. So um, as you know, I have not been in the office for quite some time. Um, I have not, uh, there probably are some wetlands uh, applications on my desk. Um, I'm planning on going in there tomorrow. So you'll have a full report at the next meeting. Um, a few things that we do have, um, we did receive an FOI request for all information relating to 119 Crooked Trail Extension. That was the investigation into the copper sulfate. So um, Cindy and I will be working on that this week. Um, it's an attorney out of West Hartford. I'm not sure who she's representing. It doesn't indicate it on the document. Um, so I'll keep you posted on that. Um, and I also have, we're in the process of, I don't know, did you have any questions on that before I move on to the other? Yeah, did you send them the four day letter? When you get a FOIA request, you should reply within four days to tell I them that her, your research. I, I did email the uh, attorney to let her know we would be working on it. I didn't send out to a letter. To give her an estimated yeah, but did she communicate by email to you? No, she sent a letter in. Yeah, um, I would send a letter back um, and give her an estimated timeline that it would take for you to assemble all the, uh, figure out exactly. Do you have any question about what she's asking for, first of all? Any and all correspondence, documents, meeting packets, inspection summaries, notes, field notes, memorandums, laboratory test data, laboratory test results, studies, opinions, reports, findings, records, drawings, maps, materials, information, photographs, any and all other documentation pertaining and or related in any way to the use of copper sulfate at 119 Crooked Trail extension and the effect or lack thereof on Witches Wood Lake in any abutting property or properties. Okay. In your reply to her, did you give her an estimated time that, that you might be able to get back to her on? Um, I have to check my email as to what I responded. Um, I received this, well, it came into the town hall on January 21st. Okay. Which I wasn't so, there. Yeah, I understand. So what I would do is I would send her a very brief written letter you could send it pdf email but okay. i still would send her a brief letter and and explain to her that you had covid and that mm -hmm. you were not in the office and that you anticipate x amount of days it would take you at least x amount of days to be able to give her an idea of the number of pages and the amount and the cost for that uh to respond to that foia request because you shouldn't be sending her anything until they agree to pay for it. So you're going to have to count up all the different items to figure out. And that's going to take you a while. And given that we have COVID and you have limited hours, give yourself plenty of time. But you really should send something to her in writing, even if you send a scanned copy electronically okay. of a letter, a, you know, a hard copy letter. Only oh. because FOIA gets really picky about stuff like that. Oh, okay. Um, all right, I will look into that. I do see um, I responded on January 20, 26th, 
when I did receive it, I had gone to the town hall and picked up a lot of my things um, that Crystal had given me so I could work at home. So yeah, I'll address that tomorrow. Um, that it may take some time because there were a lot of documents relating to this yep. over a matter of what, six months. Um, was she just asking for those that were in the wetlands files? in the agency files or was she just saying for town hall? Do you need her to clarify whose files? Well, it has together? to do with the investigation into the copper sulfate and we were the only ones handling that, the wetlands agency. I don't believe it went to anybody then else. you should probably include that, that, yeah, you should include that in your letter back to her that you're only aware that the wetlands commission or the wetlands agency was involved in that so that she okay. doesn't go looking elsewhere. You know, that if she wants to go look elsewhere, she can go look elsewhere, send it to the first selectman if she wants. Sorry, Jay. <laughs> yeah, thanks yeah, all right, for nothing. Done. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and then the other thing um, that we have going on right now, as you know, the, the uh, gas station was approved and we have the final plans that um, I have been reviewing. Delia and Jeff Gordon uh, have been reviewing before they actually send in their mylars. There's a lot of corrections. So in our review, I did, um, and I'm sure you're aware of this, that one of the, that they had, they had it set up for three um, different, uh, hold on a second, let me the plan. Okay, so they're they're only going they're only approved to have two um, gas pumps. Okay, so one of the sections that third has been removed. So in their final plans, they've shifted the underground fuel storage tanks, and I don't have a scale with me, but they've shifted it about twenty feet over from the property line, like facing the property. It would be shifting to the right. Um, because they had more room once they removed the tanks, you know, the, um, they re once they removed that one section from the plan, since they only had approval for two um, gas pumps, so they shifted over the underground fuel storage tanks, which is no closer to the wetlands. Um, to me, when I look at it, the vents are shifted over. It's just away from the property line, 20 feet. So I didn't know if you had to look at that again, if you had to review this, because it did shift over. Do you I have just, a PDF of the file? So I can send you the plan that, you know, they did send a digital. And then if you go back into the, um, Zoom meetings from August, you'll see the old plan that was online and then you can tell how it was shifted over. Bill Gowitsky, I think it would my, my recollection. Would be smart that we... Go ahead, Bill. Okay. Sorry. My recollection that it was, uh, approval was conditional that they'd come back to us with any significant uh, site changes. That's not the exact wording, but that's, that was a condition of the approval. Yeah, and they, I have the minutes. Yes, yeah, since this is gonna go on and my Lars and getting it filed on the land records, I think it should be sent to us and we should review it and, and discuss it at the next meeting before okay. they file the mylars all right i will send everything your way then just electronic version right yep okay so that's that's it i um that's all i have at this point but i will prepare a better report for the next meeting.
Tina, did you ever get any feedback from Mr. Petro uh, about the decision that we made last month about granting his dredging of his pond, but denying him the, the, the piping and the filling of wetlands? I have not heard from him, but he is aware that he has to submit a full application for any further work. So I have not heard anything from him over the last 30 days. Okay. I was going through my old stuff um, and I found, do you remember uh, Jeffrey Driscoll? He was uh, rebuilding an existing retaining wall along uh, of Quasset Road and Quasset Lake. Yes. He was supposed he was supposed to get you a locust map um, before he began instruction uh, construction. Did he ever do that? Um, I had a note that says, "Ask Tina, did she ever get a locust map to begin construction?" I believe so. It rings a bell. That was within the last few months, um, I'd have to, when I get to the office, I can check, but I'm pretty sure he did. All right. Well, Mark? Huh? <laughs> Tina's done. Oh, oh I'm sorry. Um, I wish I'm I had something exciting to tell you, but I don't. Sorry. Um, okay. I'm, okay. I got an email. Um, I'm trying to send it to you all right now. Let's see if I can do it right here. Um, send. I just forwarded an email that I received from Maura Robbie. She's a member of the um, she's a member of the Woodstock Conservation Commission, and she's saying that she feels that with all the work that Tina is doing and needs to be done you know, the wetlands agent uh, position um, that they need more time. And so, um, so Maura says, as you know, her ability to follow up on reported violations is extremely important to the protection of the town's wetlands and watercourses and enforcing the town regulations in State Inland Wetland and Watercourses Act as required. I brought up at our last Conservation Commission meeting that I'd like to support the Inland Wetlands and Watercourses Agency and write a letter of support from the Conservation Commission to the first selectman requesting additional hours be added to the wetlands agent position to be sure she has appropriate hours to follow up on all potential violations. I have heard that the town will be adding an administrative support position in that office and hope that some of the duties will be in support of the wetlands agent agency, among other things. I was also informed this letter may be good timing due to this new position. Please let me know if the Wetlands Commission has any specifics, like how many hours would suffice that we could provide in the letter as well. 
thank you. And I look forward to hearing from you soon. Now, I got this on uh, January 20th. So I wondered if we just wanted to have a little discussion on, you know, do we want to join in on a letter with the Conservation Commission or do we want to just give them, you know, because she seems to be asking me here, you know, could, could we let her know if the Wetlands Commission has any specifics, like how many hours would be sufficient uh, that we could provide in a letter as well. So, um, you know, how, how do you want me to respond to her? Do we want to say, you know, we think that the hours that, sh that the agent has now is sufficient or do we want to recommend more or what do you, what do you think? I think we have to ask Tina what the workload has been. So Tina, where do you stand on this? I, I hope that the town realizes the importance of having a fully staffed land use office, not just for the wetlands, but there is not enough time and I don't have the amount of hours to put in and it's not necessarily town's fault. I just hope that they can see for the upcoming year that they really need to staff that office. We do have Cindy on board now who's handling, she will be handling in the uh, new fiscal year a lot more. She'll be managing that office and she will be close to full-time hours and that will be a, a great, great addition to the office to where whoever you have, because I, I don't intend on staying um, you know, I'm not, I haven't like given a notice or anything, but I just hope whoever comes after me that they do allow, you know, somebody pretty close to full time to handle what's going on in that office. It's extremely busy. It's not just dealing with the boards and commissions, but there's just lots of problems that you can't respond to quickly. You have to investigate, you have to research, you know, a lot of times you have to you know, consult with other professionals and it, it, everything just takes so long. So I, I'm, I am frustrated. Um, I don't have the amount of time that really I need to do a great job. You know, I just have to say. So, I, so how many hours do they dedicate now to wetlands? Well, I have um, right now like a total of five a week. You know, there's flexibility. And oh, God. <laughs> just... I, I, I have 15 and they're constantly asking me, do you want to do more? And I've said no, because it really is the job just for the wetlands um, to do all the reviews and to do the research is probably at least 20 hours. Um, I'm, I'm working off of, of 15 and because I've told them I don't want any more hours than that. And um, it's, it's difficult, but that's the way I want to work my personal life too. So um, if you're only getting five a week, that's way under what it should be. Um, it yeah, should actually new, be. <laughs> it's a full-time office plus, you know, between Cindy and the administrative functions mm -hmm. and the, the person in the um, ZEO and wetlands role. It is a full-time job and I'm skimping and doing what I can to handle the problems that are before me. But I feel with all of the building that's going on in town, there's just so much activity and complaints have been crazy. And there's just so much that, that you can do There's you know, so Jay's on the line. Hopefully he has something to add. Well, I'll just say to all of you, um, Tina and I are in frequent, frequent daily contact. I'm very aware of the issues and her concerns. I'm also very supportive of what's trying to be done in that office. And as she alluded to, the amount of building going on in town. So I cannot comment officially tonight. We, um, the treasurer and I and others are very aware of this. Uh, we have proposals that we're working on that will be presented as part of the uh, budget for next fiscal year. 
um, our budgets will have to go to the Board of Finance for approval. But um, I'm in agreement with Tina with what her concerns are. Um, and there are others in town wall that agree how important this is. Um, I can't officially comment because I can't tell you dollars and cents what's being proposed. I can't tell you hours that are being proposed. But, yeah, we're very aware of it. And, and you know, this would have to be approved by the Board of Finance. So maybe one of the helpful things that could be for us is that when it, the proposal is going to go before the Board of Finance, that we get notified as commission members to get a notice. Because I, a couple of years back, when uh, Terry Bellman's hours were being cut um, and when Terry ultimately left, I had ended up testifying at the Board of Finance to no avail um, to get certain things addressed because I was concerned that they were cutting the staff way too much. Um, but I, I don't always pay attention to what other offices are doing in town hall with Board of Finance. So it would be helpful if there was, if, if Tina could send out or your office could send out to the commission members notifications of when the Board of Finance is gonna meet, when they're gonna have their meetings or when they're gonna have their hearings so that we have a chance to have input. I think that's a reasonable request because again, her efforts, Tina's efforts, we, you know, are, are directly reflected to this particular group and others. So I, I yeah, I think that's very reasonable. Would the You've letter- seen how complicated, sorry. Would, would the letter that the Conservation Commission is thinking of writing, um, should they have send a letter to the Board of Finance instead of uh, the selectmen? I think initially they could send it to the selectmen because they know it's coming down. Um, and then eventually the Board of Selectmen are going to have to go to the Board of Finance. See, the Board of Selectmen can come up with all kinds of wonderful ideas. But, in, and we are the ones that, um, we get no credit for anything. We get all the blame. What people, general public forget is, this is all funded by the Board of Finance. So we go to them seeking approval to fund these wonderful ideas and whether or not they give it, you know, that, that's what the issue is. So, you know, I think if, if this group wanted to send a letter in support of um, what this office needs. And again, I, I would caution you, you can't really say uh, how many dollars, how many cents, or how many hours a week, but certainly how important this, um, this position is to your, you know, to, to your goals and what you do. Right. But again, you know, uh, just to allay any fears you may have, Tina and I are in contact almost daily um, on this issue. We've talked about it for months. And, um, you know, I understand very much, uh, you know, what, what she's proposing and why she's proposing it. And I obviously uh, see between her office and the building office what's going on in town and the expansion and building and this sort of thing. So. Um, yeah, we're very aware of the needs of that building office and uh, land use, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah, and, and you can see how important just being the position is like a liaison between the public. You know, when we get complaints and, you know, we've got to go do, you know, inspections and then she's got to, you know, then be in contact with our town attorney and then with you and, and then maybe even the other commissions. Uh, in town. So as a real, uh, you know, liaison, you know, and like, uh, I think Marla mentioned, you know, research, you know, that a lot of that goes in and you, you see, you've seen the, the complexity of the documents that are being filed and submitted that we have to review. So, you know, yeah. So we'll, we'll definitely make sure that all that kind of information is included <laughs> in the letter. Okay. No, and, and that's fine. And again, I'm very supportive of this group because uh, you know, background in conservation, that sort of thing. So, um, yeah, I'm very supportive of what you do and 
and how you're watching the resources we have in town. And, and Tina knows that. So yeah. um, anyway, we'll, yeah. we'll see how it all plays out. Yeah. Just, uh, I, I think, I think the position with everything and all the development going on in town and just the issues, it's expanding. That office seems to be really needing more assistance, whether it be Delia being more involved on that aspect. I don't know if that's a possibility, um, but you know, I, I'm very pleased with the town, the treasurer, Jay, you know, being very open to my, what I've been sharing with them because I've seen a problem myself over the last six months, you know, just keeping up. It's, it's been very challenging. I was wondering when you were going to say something. <laughs> yeah, no, no it's definitely it's, been it's, very, it's I've, I've obviously... put in a lot of time. I put in as much as I possibly can, but I'm being pulled in a lot of different directions and it's frustrating because I want to do a great job. And it, it's, it's hard, you know, <laughs> so I definitely see where this yeah. is going. Yeah. And, you know, I don't see that the future that it's going to be me in that role. I think you're going to need somebody that is, you know, has all of those full qualifications and somebody, you know, that can really take on the environmental aspects. I just see the position, you know, and I kind of was a place filler for a little bit and it's worked out great, but I see that the role is changing and, and the needs of the town is, you know, that it's definitely changing. In, and to get the in, skill set that the town really needs, it's, it's yes. going to be somewhat costly. I mean, yes. it, you're combining a lot of different um, skill sets in there. Yes. Um, it's not easy. No, it's not. And, you know, I feel frustrated because there's only so much that I can do. I don't have that whole side of things. I'm not, I didn't go to college for that whole environmental mm -hmm. side of things. So I'm mm -hmm. a little, I know. you know, and I'm doing the best that you've I can. You've been trying really hard everyone, though. I, and I you've know. you've been doing a good I, job. And, <laughs> thanks. I, I'm doing my best, but I think we're getting to the point now where the town has to invest in that. It's important to the people that reside in town, you know. Mm -hmm. So that's just my opinion. So I respect whatever you come up with. So Mark, are you gonna try to do that letter? All right, I'll try to put together a letter and then I'll send it to you um, to help me wordsmith it and we can talk about it at the Bill's next pretty meeting. Good at, Bill's pretty good at this stuff too, so don't leave him out. Yeah, Bill, yeah, I'm gonna... Bill, you wanna... <laughs> Maybe, Bill, you should start it off. <laughs> you, you want me to start it, Bill? You start it. All right, I'll, I'll start it and I'll send it to you and Marla. Uh, and, uh, and then, then I can, you know, when we all agree, then we can send it to the, uh, we can send a copy to the conservation commission as I, was, I did, I, I forwarded it to you. I, I was trying to figure out if, if she is like, was asking us for, to go in on a letter with her or just do our own. I don't know. But she was she was uh, asking. I think for... it would be a. Go ahead. What was that? Uh, I, I was just going to say my own personal opinion. You're better off, I think, writing your own letter, because if you get a letter with a whole bunch of signatures, I don't think it carries as much weight as two separate letters. And again, that's just my uh, opinion. Okay. And, and I think Maura was referring probably to that property on 198. I had visited, is it Mark? I think his name, um, they, he had cleared his whole yard and, you know, it, there was some wetlands on the bottom. They didn't have any, um, they didn't get a permit. 
he was supposed to pl apply and, and um, submit an application. And I haven't heard from him over the last couple of months. He had a couple of people in his family pass away from COVID. So he was away. So that application should be coming. Um, but I had gone out to the site. I had taken photographs and um, it was just on hold. So I think it did take a while for me to address that situation. And I think more was probably- Yeah, but as long as the, the problem that you're doing is you're triaging. And there, when you triage, you're looking for the things that are actually causing increased damage. And those that are kind of static, they kind of go to the wayside till you have time. And sometimes you never get time. And mm -hmm. you know, I have the same issue, but I, I think we need to probably look at giving the letter ourselves. I agree with what Jay said. Okay, good. I'll but don't worry that. about those that go away. I mean, that that kind of fall through the cracks a little bit. If they're really that significant, they will come back as more complaints. The squeaky wheel will get the grease, mm -hmm. so to speak. Okay. Uh, okay. Do we have any bills that we... Uh, I think I got something from... The treasurer's office a while ago but it was just a more of a you know if i had any problem with it you know i don't think they need my our approval on i don't have any for you but yeah, okay. i think they've been handling them directly with you yeah yeah okay all right anything else citizens comments uh, any other topics I gotta go shovel. Snow. Okay. Yeah. Sorry. You fire I move up. to adjourn. Second. Motion's been made by Marla Butts, seconded by Bill Rowinski to adjourn. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? So moved. At 9.07 p.m. <laughs>